So, but a man must not merely consider what is lawful, but what is expedient in order to edify others. That's Matthew Henry's commentary on 1 Corinthians 10, 29. So, a man must not merely consider what is lawful, but what is expedient given that situation to edify others. Um, in 1 Corinthians 10, um, 25, eat whatever is, is sold, and no, 26, no, 27, if any of those who do not believe invites you to dinner and you desire to go, eat whatever is set before you, asking no question for conscience sake. But if anyone says to you, this was offered to idols, do not eat it, blah, blah, 29, conscience, I say, not your own, is what Paul is saying, but that of the other. For why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? But if I partake with thanks, why am I evil spoken of for the food over which I give thanks? Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Um, I just feel like I should speak a word about, yeah. Okay. It was really on my heart to speak about, um, you know what really came to my mind over and over is <laughs> what the church, what normal, you know, typical church would do if someone smoked a cigarette in the parking lot. I just always think about people, come, the newcomers, that, which aren't very many, coming to the church and why they don't feel comfortable coming to the church. And um, because they probably just can't be themselves. And they don't feel like they can because, you know, when I was in the church, I left the church because I felt rejected. And I felt like I was just being watched. Every single thing I did was like, no, 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 no. But um, anyways, 1 Corinthians 9.19, Paul says, I'm sorry, Acts 9.19, Paul says, um, basically, I, become, I use my freedom and become what I need to be to win the more. Not that I take advantage of it. But I'll use it as see fit, given the situation, to win the more. To the Jew, I become a Jew. To the slave, I become a slave. Um, Paul did not care about his reputation or even what the brethren thought of him. He was willing to go to Jerusalem. He went against the theological, the biggest theological seminary debate, one of them, which I cannot believe is Paul going to Jerusalem. Was he disobedient to the Holy Spirit? Absolutely not. I mean, the first time I read it, I was like, absolutely not. The Holy Spirit told him to go. He was going to suffer, and that looked unwise to Luke, his right-hand man, you know, the Lord's chosen, you know, Luke, the man, and Agabus, the prophet. They begged him not to go because they were concerned about his mortal body and what he was going to suffer and what was wise for him. Today, we would set call that maybe, you know, um, you know, if you're, if for some reason the Lord had you go to jail and you had a choice not to, but you chose to, your parents would say, that's, a, that's not wise for you to do that because, you know, you're going to suffer. But really, whatever we do, and that's in, that includes, you know, whatever your ministry is. Um, you know, I don't consider, for some reason, the Lord always wants me to talk about smoking a cigarette. <laughs> it's always gotten a hot button for me. I feel like I don't smoke that much, but if I do want to smoke a cigarette... I feel like in a lot of people at the church that do smoke, some of them smoke regularly and some smoke just on occasion, just a cigarette or whatever. And like, if it has to be hidden in the church, like, no, 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 no. Like, God forbid you smoke a cigarette in the church because the Holy Spirit, you don't, you must not have the Holy Spirit if you smoke a cigarette. I know that's like a contingent style, but, but I'm only talking to a certain group of people. Um, this isn't, this isn't for everybody. Um, I believe there's people that are called to make, um, to a ministry that isn't, um, that goes out to get the other sheepfold. And, you know, um, the Lord Jesus says, I have sheep that are not of this fold. They must come, you know, somebody's got to go get them. There's got to be vessels. There's got to be, um, those type of harvesters that are going to go into those fields. And the Lord is so creative that he is, he uses, like Paul was a Jew. He had a heart for the Jews. And, um, you know, they did not Christ and he had a heart for them because he used to be one. So of course God used his heart and those, those, those things to go. He just could not help himself from going to the Jews. 
So there was purpose in that. And um, I just think it's so funny when I get to, when I tell the Lord specifically took me into bartending out of corporate America because that's where he wanted my ministry. He wanted me to be there um, and to waitressing, bartending. Mama. Um, Mama. What? You have to go fast. I'm going. And I would get, you know, from any of you know, the churches I was going to, like, I, I mean, I've went to several between now and then. But I always get that question, well, are you going to be tempted? Oh, I just want to get, I just want to, like, nothing irks me more. Like, if you, I'm so past that. Like, if that is the first thing you think of is yourself, and if you're going to be tempted, you can't even, like, that's the last thing on my mind. Like, I, I'm thinking about, you know, what the Lord's going to do and praying for this place every day that I go there and the hearts that are there and the vessel that I'm called to be to minister the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only Lord. There is no other, as the Bible says. And what he, whatever he wants me to say, whether that is to bring someone to Christ or, which I feel like a lot is in my case, is to those that have been, that have been saved but have been rejected by the church and have left and um, the Lord wants, you know, he's going to go out and find them. And um, that was me. I'm one of those, like, that happened to me. The Lord came and found me where I was at after I had left the church. And he redeemed me all in one moment and told me, you know, just supernaturally ripped the veil from my eyes and um, basically said, the Holy Spirit will teach you. You don't need, you know, you don't need me to teach you. You don't have to go to seminary. You're going to be a voice for me. And I feel like there's a lot of you out there that are planted in places that people look down on, especially the, especially, we don't have shoes on. We can't go in the church. <laughs> outside we'll come back um but i want to give an example <laughs> in the legends of the guardian there's a owl named get grimble and he is working for the pure ones the pure ones of the evil owl clan the guardians of the good owl clan he has been he is a legendary warrior fighter owl he is actually for the guardians but he has been captured um, and he is literally, I, he sacrificed his life to stay. He could fly away, but he sacrificed his life to stay and work for the pure ones undercover. Everyone thinks he's bad. He's working with the bad guys his whole life because he has a calling to, because um, he knows there's, there's a calling that one day he's going to be, um, be used as a part to redeem the guardians. And lo and behold, the two owls get captured. They get taken to... Grimble, you know, the head of the pure ones, the evil woman and man, man take the little, the ain't the, um, the little owls to get trained to fly by Grimble. You know, they think, of course, he's evil. He's never broke cover. And lo and behold, Grimble is actually a, a, the guardian. He is, you know, sacrifices life in captivity and undercover. So whenever they come, he teaches them how to fly. They're shocked that he's for the guardians Mama. and they get away and save the whole at all the guardians get Mama. saved because of the sacrifice Mama. that Grimble made yeah I want my okay we'll go get it um um so that's very important and Paul displays this so much of course and Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice but I'm speaking to the people that I'm speaking to the ones that hear what I'm saying you're like me. You love the Lord Jesus with all your heart. You're called to the gospel of the ministry of Jesus Christ to um, go into places that might look like your rep that is going to sacrifice your reputation. Your parents are going to say it's not wise. You're going to be called to do things that maybe are dangerous, that make you look bad. You might even smoke a cigarette with some people and minister the gospel, okay? Or have a cocktail that somebody gets saved. Um, and the sanctification process is 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 a real it is the most important act of the lord really i mean of course because of the blood of jesus christ shed for us as you as a believer walk with christ you can't force anyone into the sanctification process that is only by the power and the grace actively working with you to sanctify and chastise you as you go through the process with the lord so when the mass the mass of the Christian churches expect, you know, you can't smoke a cigarette in the parking lot. Like, what if the Lord hadn't told me that I that He don't want me to do that? What if the Lord says that I can smoke a cigarette my whole life? You don't know what my ministry is. 
Um, I mean, I'm just not, it's, I mean, really, you don't know. Now, there are things that are clearly, clearly, you know, you, sh you know, things that are disobedient with the Lord hates. You know, as a mature believer, the people that I'm talking to, you understand this. I've been pure, saving myself for marriage for, you know, three years. But when the fir Lord first delivered me a few years ago on 92515, I was, I was walking with the Lord and my life was, ch I mean, for real, love the Lord with all my heart, stuff, like everything. And um, the, it took a while for the Lord to break that off of me, but it was for a reason. Like, I, I was still doing that until, you know, a couple years later. The sanctification process is between the Lord and you. Our job is to be vessels. We are of the Lord Jesus Christ and to be messengers to go to those places where the church is not reaching, you know. And the majority, like I said, of people I talk to, you're to be those undercover. I mean, some of you are called to, like, you know, but you're still being yourself because God, God is so good. I've got to hurry before my phone dies. Um, but he creates you specifically to, to specific places. And the church might question you about, oh, who cares? Like, I'm very proud the Lord called me into bartending. And I got a lot of, gosh, I can't believe that I even got questioned about that. Like, that blows my mind. Because, I mean, if you even read the any part of the Bible, you see that the Lord Jesus, like, good Lord, like, Nothing can separate us from his love. You think he's scared of cigarettes, drugs, or alcohol, or sex, or what process, whatever you're doing, or wherever you are. Like, I've seen the Holy Ghost move in sex store. Like, I have ministered all kind of places. Um, I've prayed to people while I was smoking a cigarette outside on our break, you know, while I was bartending. Because um, a lot of times... That's the only, you know, the wait waiters, bartenders have really long, hard nights. It's stressful, and you don't, that's our only time to vent is by, you know, smoking a cigarette. And there was several times where I didn't even want to smoke, but, you know, I went out there, and I was like, man, I'll smoke a cigarette with you. And um, we ended up talking about the Lord, and they, you know, pe you know, people's hearts turned back to the Lord, and they even encouraged me, and the Holy Spirit was present. I mean... I don't know where, why in the world people make, the church makes a cigarette such a big deal, but I'm going to tell you right here today, if the Lord, the Lord can, the Holy Ghost ain't stopping somebody smoking a cigarette, okay? Um, the Holy Ghost power can go through anywhere. He uses the, why, the foolish things in 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 29, he uses the why, the foolish things to confound the wise, the despised things. The Lord says, I use the despised things to, um, to, to confound the wise and to for his glory. Y'all, there's so much going on in the world. Like, this, the world is totally corrupt and crazy. Like, we can, we're called to be vessels wherever that is. And we need to really check ourselves on what is important and what is not important. I'm preaching to the choir, though. My point is 919 of Acts. Um, Paul says, I become what I need to become so that I might win the more. Anything you do needs to be checked by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that you're going through the sanctification process and that you are, um, that you answer to the Lord over all, you know, wise counsel is great and prayer is so great, but you ultimately answer to the Lord, you know, what you might be called to do might look foolish and you might, might look foolish, unwise. It might make you broke. It might put you where, who knows, but the Lord is, you're, we're not our own. The, I am not my own. My Reputation. Everything about me belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, I will minister the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And like I said, none of us on this earth are perfect. None of us. In the sanctification process, there is a process you, the Lord will take you through. But like the book of James says, you know, faith in your works as far as faith without works is dead. That is not salvation. That is we, there is a process of sanctification. When you step with the Lord, He steps with you, and there's levels to this thing. And I hope that anybody listening, seeking the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh, is going through that sanctification process because there's levels to this as far as, you know, the Lord using you for your specific purpose and who you're called to, the other sheepfold. I'm talking to people called to the other sheepfold that aren't worried about um, what the organized religion is going to think of you. Um, or, you know, the SBC or whatever, we don't get, you, you don't, we don't get our sermons or ideas from 
what religion says or thinks. We speak to the, the Holy Spirit through the power of the Lord Jesus speaks to us. And we say, we must say whatever the Lord calls us to say. You know, like I said, the whole video I've been like, you know, smoking a cigarette. We should welcome people into the church, if they're, even if they're smoking a cigarette in the parking lot. Like, big freaking deal. Like, good Lord. Um, and what I, the point I made earlier, I'm trying to do this before my phone dies. Like, when I was bartending, and when people had been drunk, and people had been whatever. And I know this whenever I used to drink back in college. I don't anymore, anymore really, at all. I mean, a glass of wine every now and then. But the Lord can't address what he is not brought out. When the Lord, the Lord will bring things out in weird ways, even if you're drunk, even if you're, whatever you're going through. And I want to be there as that vessel to, to be, a, to minister to whatever that need is, whether that is to turn in someone back to Christ, to help in, uh, to hear in his voice, the Lord Jesus's voice clear to, to salvation, um, and to repentance, to, um, whatever, whatever the Lord has me to say, whatever that is, encouraging somebody and what's crazy is every time I've encouraged, like the Lord has given me a, some, you know, to speak to somebody and the Holy Spirit is connected um, where I'm at with someone, I have been at the same time. What's wrong, baby? We're going. The Lord has encouraged me so much and helped to sanctify me. What? Oh, do the cows? Okay, we'll go. So, um, I just want to read also, this, I just, this popped up. Hosea 2.23 says, I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I called not my loved. And I will say to those called not my people, you are my people. Um, Exodus 33.19, And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am with you and I know you by name. You can look at the prophets and examples. Every part of scripture is true. Every, you either believe the Bible for every single word that it says or every or you don't at all. There, But there are things in your life that can't be found in the Bible. God will use the Bible to speak to you. The Word of God needs, of course, lined up with the Word of God. But you need to always go to prayer because the Lord does a new thing. You are not exactly Moses. You're not exactly Paul. What the Lord is doing in some of you... Um, the remnant or whoever you have this rare, rare ministry. We, you don't even, you know, in your heart that the Lord God, Jesus Christ, you've, it's called you to do. Um, it doesn't look like anything else you've seen, maybe bits and pieces here and there, but you, you haven't fully seen it cause it's, it's the Lord is doing a new thing. So I just hope, pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this video by the power of Yahweh reaches those who it needs, needs to reach. And um, that I am, you know, my words aren't perfect. I say things and watch back and I'm like, man, I, that looks, I should have said that better. I should have not said that, you know. I don't want to look like a hoodlum. But like I said, I I might not always be perfect with my words. Like Paul says, I, di I didn't come in excellence of speech. I'm really, really not that good with it. But I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart. I, Yahweh. He is the, the Lord of my life. And um, he speaks. And he's so close to us, and I just, in so many ways, he speaks. He speaks, and 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 with he, even when he doesn't speak, he speaks. And my life is dedicated as a vessel for him and his glory. So, um, I never want to lead anyone astray or say the wrong thing. Just, just go to the Lord with everything. He calls us to be holy, but let the Lord tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Um, the Lord God is who you answer to. That's who you answer to. The Lord Jesus Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. You answer to the Lord Jesus. He will tell you. He will speak to you. So, seek Him on whatever strange thing He's called you to do. Because it, He'll just, the Lord, it's, mm, there's no better, there's nothing better in the whole world than talking about the Lord and let, just being in his presence, abiding in him all, I mean, just all day, just all the time, just thinking about the Lord. <sighs> the Lord is, is good. And, um, that's it.